Talk to me honestly. Today's global futures markets are more that company we had and some more some more stuff. So yeah. Okay. All right, y'all let's get going. Let's go ahead and look at the rational, irrational side of the market. Good news we're coming up here. Love you guys. Hit that like button while you're learning. Uh, we did have a super deep break in the stock this week. Shit, my volume is low. Thanks for letting me know. How did that happen? Oh my god. Okay. Jeez Louise. My 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 mic slider was turned down. You know what happens? My damn cats jump up up here and start. Then Harry thing, please start over. Rational market. That's it. And then of unemployment stuff. <laughs> Uh, all right.
I'm gonna do the analysis. Can you hear me now? Damn cats, get up here. I swear to God, I, I lock the door. I feel like, I mean, I close the door. These little jailbreakers come in here, somehow pry their ways in sometimes. They sneak in in every way possible. And I notice that all, all the sliders on my, uh, on my uh, input board here are all different angles, different levels. So I bet you they're up here batting it with their paws all night. All right, BRSU on SPY, let's go. Rational market looking good. I just said that unemployment is has a lag time. That's all I was saying. Um, before you start to see economical effects. Just because unemployment numbers coming in bad, more people getting laid off, effective labor getting laid off, it's not necessarily going to be like doom and gloom today. There's always a lag time where the recession just is a slower slowdown over time. You lay someone off, they're, they're not necessarily like like immediately penny pinching. Like that's what causes slowdown. You know, you have savings, you have credit cards. People try to float for a while and they'll change their standard of living, thinking they'll get a job back. It usually takes one to two quarters for people to finally start saying, okay, I really am laid off. Shit, I need to start saving money. And then they stop spending and stop and their credit worthiness goes down and they're behind on their bills. And then credit slows down as, as a result of that. So the whole layoffs going up has a delayed effect on the, the impact it has on the economy as a whole. That's all I'm saying. So it's like, a beat on the unemployment numbers or a miss on the unemployment numbers not necessarily always going to be like a knee-jerk reaction like oh my gosh everyone got laid off markets markets dying it, it brings inflation down which is the bigger mechanic motivating wall street more unemployed people with jolts coming down think about it like this fewer jobs more people that need a job so the supply way outweighs the demand uh, therefore wages are going to plummet which is the main source of inflation at the start of covid uh recession Call it COVID recession. Inflation was started by high wages. All right, burst bur showed up. So it's actually as a, a competing good mechanic for the for the longer term bad effect. Okay, hedge pressure resistance to the downside, 427 likely support. So it looks like we have another relaxation sell off day. DD is coming in a little weaker than we had before, 0.71, 73 somewhere in there. Um, open below hedge, stay below hedge. We're likely trading inside of here uh, today. How come? Where is everybody today? Uh, post this link up. Let's go. Oh, let me just maybe if I don't post a link, they don't know about it. All right, bear short up. Same thing. QQQ is a immune reversion inside of here. I don't bet on hedge pressure breaks. It's likely to hit hedge pressure pull back. Uh, so another relaxing sell off day today. Um, I would say. Uh, now again, we could break hedge pressure to the upside. I always like to wait in markets like this when this is positive. I like to wait and take the break, not take the short against it. Um, that was in a good trade a couple days ago. I'm keeping an eyeball on resilience. This is going to talk the strength of the gap fill on the indices. So I wanted to rustle again because that was the strong one yesterday. I'll pull out some big stocks in a second as well. Your dog figured out how to open his treat covered. Oh, yeah, you're fucked. <laughs> You've lost all control now. Your dog is gonna run the show. Belong up with the support at 184 and a half. It looks pretty okay. Let's run monthly maps, just generically seeing what's going on. Uh, we'll see if it's another HP break day. We'll have to kind of go to the long-term map, see how much that's actually changing. Still, still okay on the bull side. Uh, still weakening bear sign, of course. You have that same trajectory going into the into the summer. So all that shows is that the market's still sustainably bullish. Uh, this could be just like another relaxing day today. Um, QQQ does have a gap to be filled here. I was hoping to get it yesterday. Uh, so you can see there's some strong bullishness here. Obviously, um, what I do want to see is some kind of support to the downside. Uh, and, and bring it back up. So today, today is likely going to be a candle with a wick and then the support right here. There's no way this is not, none of this at all. None of this spells out the idea that we're collapsing. All this seems good. The market is strong and bullish. You can see that right there. Um, again, not investment advice. Take it with a grain of salt. Uh, just relaxation day today. Uh, whatever, wherever consolidation that we are, we're likely to stay inside of here. So any dip is likely going to get bought up. You can see that there are bulls waiting and bears waiting to exit. It's easy to see that. So dips are going to be bought. So I'm going to be looking for bull setups. If I can get them and sitting on crappy bear ones. The market's going to have a hard time being bearish. IWM. Look at this. This has shifted drastically. Small caps used to not have a lot of oomph to them. Right now, the Russell is getting all the love through the summer. Uh, and the Russell, the bears are still trying to short this. It's a little choppy. You can see the bear side is getting weaker and weaker and weaker, and the bull side is getting stronger 
Uh, weakening in this July Fed week, and then of course strong volatility is coming back down and being liquid again. So very liquid. Um, liquid markets don't crash on themselves. This is the week of the Russell. The Russell's gonna be the, the uh, stronger effect. Now, this doesn't mean today, but Russell's looking hella good. Okay, let's look at Tesla really quick. Let me stop the monthly map here. Tesla has upside gaps to fill. Tesla looking good for a bull long up today. Hedge pressure support. It's pretty nice. Monthly map again. I'm in a slow load time here. We're still bullish in Tesla. Bear side weakening over the course of the next month. This is all the way to June 26th. So, actually, sorry, to, to June the 3rd. Jul July the 3rd. So, when you see the bear bull side strengthening and the bear side weakening, this is just, that implies it's a short squeeze and people are buying the dip at the same time. So, it's double bull power. When you see them both slope down, it's very illiquid to the bull side. Tesla looking strong. Give me some tickers, I'll run them for you guys. Those of you who haven't checked out Rocket Security yet, go to the link in the bio. You can play with this yourself. And in the description, not the bio. Scroll down. You can grab it for $35 a month. You can unlock the $200 a month package and see the entirety of Rocket Scooter and use these tools to your advantage in your analysis of the market. These are market maker and institutional positions, and we are the first in the world to reveal that to you. I AMD, Microsoft, let's go. All right, Apple, still looking kind of strong. AMD, all, all things looking good still. Market's still trying to find reasons to be bullish. AMD. Bull strengthening, bear weakening, same thing. Short squeeze and rally. Microsoft, they all look the same. Okay, so I'm just gonna say that the tech tech is leading the way. Microsoft, very, very, very short squeeze. Like I said, Microsoft is gonna lead the way. This is so sharp, people cannot flee Microsoft fast enough. This is a straight line down. These are bears running for cover. Microsoft has another leg up. It's gonna be weird to guess that these stocks are gonna all-time highs. Imagine the recession that we're in. We're gonna see stocks push here before there's any downside to Microsoft's destiny. Obviously, technical traders love to shorten and sell off on double tops. This is going to fight its way to all-time highs, 100%. My bet. That's just my bet, of course, what do I know? Not investment advice. Now again, this is a weird market. Other stocks have done it. Nvidia has done it. Um, Microsoft will be in the same boat. Nvidia still showing another another week of strength, another week of short covering before the market relaxes. So Nvidia is likely to hold the fort. Uh, probably not to break out highs because this is very short lived. But essentially, Nvidia is going to hang here for at least a week, and then right here you're going to have a little bit of profit taking. Um, and it goes the other way, right? Right about here, profit taking on the longs and shorts are going shorter. So Nvidia is likely to relax a little bit about two weeks and i love monthly maps these things are killer so liquidity map monthly map is projecting into the future this is the longer term sentiment right we have monthly options we should have monthly map i don't know if that's pulling anything up this one's weird looking so this has no real good distribution this is very gross and very odd very illiquid as well whatever this is what is vfc i don't know all the ticker names uh so if you look at this bear side above bull side that's very different this is called illiquidity pocket. So this is gonna be very volatile and very violent. Your bulls and bears are both in the money. So it means it's a very illiquid, uh, very violent fight. People are buying the dip and people are, are also shorting at the same time. You can't make any discernible thing other than it's going to be volatile, big wide days on this thing. Uh, and it doesn't stabilize until here where it becomes slightly more bullish. So you really can't guess what's gonna happen. It's likely to bounce around very rapidly and hold. This is a consolidation pattern. Amazon, Google. I'll do two, two more. Let's get back to the intraday. Amazon, stronger to the bull side, uh, weaker to the bear side, just like everything else in tech. Believe it or not, this monthly map pattern has been prevalent since October of last year. We were the first to call a bull market. As a matter of fact, they tweeted a bull market two days after we bottomed and said, this is the bottom. And people were like, this guy's crazy. I was in all these spaces and podcasts, and all these famous people. They're all talking about it. They were like, it's a bear market. It's doom and gloom. The market is going to die. Uh, it's just silly. And I'm like, so silly, raise my hand. I was like, well, um, I don't know. I think I'm going to be bullish for an entire year. 
people were like, what do you mean? It's like bullish. And they're like, but have you seen the, you know, we have this problem, Fed's raising rates, there's quantitative tightening. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but there's inflation and bond markets crashing. And I'm like, I, I know, but this, that, and sky is falling and everyone's gonna die. And, and there's meteorites crashing. It's like dinosaur apocalypse part. I'm like, I know, it's pretty bad. But uh, October 17th, bear, <laughs> I'm calling a bottom for 2022 and a rally through mid-January, genuine buying. A bear market gets nasty again around quarter two in summer, probably for lower lows. Imagine that. So I said through mid-January, and then of course, and when January came around, we kept running monthly maps, and every month it was like bullish, 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 bullish. Use monthly maps to figure this with this entire thesis. I said, don't listen to fundamentalists out there and say the sky is falling. That's not how markets collapse. Markets do not crash even in a recession unless there's a mechanic to tip them over. What's that mechanic usually? Some kind of stimulated event like a, uh, you know, like a bankruptcies or something. They don't just crash when they're liquid. Mark, liquid markets do not crash. Historically, that is the law of the land as a trader. It's how they go down. It's the art form of being a trader is understanding how markets go down. We can be bullish for an entire year in the middle of a recession. Recessions can last for years to decades. I mean, you can, they can last for a long time. You have people willing to plant their money in the stock market if the stock market loses less than inflation. I mean, that, that's a, a key choice to any investor. If inflation's high and stock market's just holding flat, you're going to put your money in stock markets uh, temporarily just because they're burning less than your cash is burning. It's a very simple choice any money manager would make. All right, so it's still looking good on resilience. Uh, this doesn't look like a decent trading day. Uh, so this is gonna be a volatile likely day. Um, any break from here is a, a liquidity pocket that likely can push from here to the middle. There's maybe a head or break event that goes to here, but this is a day I don't wanna trade today. Resilience is just right on the edge here. Um, something smells really good. Should we make a pop tart? Ooh! I smell some delicious breakfast. All right. Um, questions. Pardon me. We gonna sneeze there. You guys smash that like button while you're hanging out. We love y'all. This is what I said. Um, monthly maps. It's all monthly maps. Fundamentals. We talked about the cycling of unemployment. How back in October of last year, I said that the Fed, um, we're gonna have a, uh, the Fed is trying to avoid stagflation. That the Fed. It, Wall Street was looking for the Fed to cut rates uh, to be bullish, blah, blah, blah. And then I basically said, um, I wrote a longer thesis on Reddit, but I said, back in October, I said, the Fed is going to start trimming rates and, and, and going to zero rate hike and just holding it flat. And people were like, you're, you're stupid. You have no idea what you're talking about. And I was like, I bet, no, every day, every idea I know what I'm talking about. I'm a professional trader. I like, do this for a living. I've been doing this for over a decade. I've seen recessions. I've seen what it looks like. And I'm saying, this is what it is. It, it's not just like, I know you, like all these kids, like first time around, it's a recession. And let's just repeat what we hear on the news. The market, see, there's waves in a recession. And then right here, October the 17th, I made that tweet. Just let you know, that's here. That's here. That's literally right there. Talk about the aim I had on that. Look at this. That was the day before. All right. Green candle and red candle. And that's what it looked like. And I came out and I called the bottom. I pointed the fence like babe fucking Ruth. Well, that's it. Oh, this guy's crazy. No, this guy don't nothing. No, he didn't. This, have you ever been to an economics class? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you ever traded a thing in your life? And then ever since then, ever since then, monthly maps, that's it. This one little button right here reveals that. And it still reveals that. And it reveals it's still bullish till the middle of summer. That's all it says. So the idea is that Positions show everything. People are wanting along this. Well, why? Who knows why? Look at their own reasons. A million reasons along something. So the market just does not have any bear. Bears are getting squeezed harder than than uh, anything. Longs are buying the dip. Market makers are holding the bag. The net liquidity is going up, and you have institutional positions uh, betting against the house, and the house is holding the bag. The long the net market maker long position. The market's never crashed once in the history of the stock market. That's the pro trader knows. And that's what the fundies don't know because they just read the news on the surface and chase what it is. You know, the Jim Cramers of the world just repeat things where they are. This is where the market's the most bearish. 
we we found lower lows and had a giant red candle. Then I'm ready building a tweet. I guess the bottom. It's done. That's it. And it's gonna. It's not gonna get worse until the summer. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm good. Not really. Rocket suit is good. I mean, I have to give credit to the technology we have. To be understanding that there are. I do understand fundamentals, by the way. But I understand something better. I understand how fundamentals move the market. I don't look at bad news and say market comes down. I mean, this stuff is very slow. Just like I said this morning, you lose your job. You're not. Some people might be like, okay, I got to be very careful. I remember when I got laid off in 2010. I. Still bought the same amount of groceries, still went to the same amount of bars, still played the same amount of video games when I'm in my 20s. I didn't change a damn thing for many months. And then after a couple months later, once people exhaust their savings, max out their credit cards, can't get a new credit card, can't get, then they go, ooh, I'm probably gonna have to start getting serious now and start saving money and spending less. And then my effect on the economy is a delayed response from the moment you get laid off. And I know that there's mechanics to stuff, well, because I have an engineering degree. I went to engineering school, not to, real on you economics folks in here but engineering is the the pursuit of seeing uh things from all angles finding the root cause of a problem and solving a problem by looking at all the data that goes into it and solving a problem is understanding things like rates and delayed effects and and the immediate impact of a thing on a thing it's like a mindset they train you how to think Engineering. So my engineers here give me a what up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You learn how to think and solve problems. I know that just because you saw layoffs go up, there's human beings are different are all different. They're gonna behave differently. But nine times out of ten, most people are gonna believe they're gonna get a job before they start feeling problems from the loss of the job they have. Because most people might have some savings and you know their cards are maxed out, ability to float a little bit. So it's not like, okay, you laid off 100,000 people or 20% layoffs, markets and crash. As a matter of fact, when companies lay people off, the immediate response is usually bullish. And like, again, <laughs> you only know that from trading, why the immediate response is bullish. It's not because letting people go is good or bad for the company. You let people go for many reasons. A lot of times you can let people go because they're not really producing anything for the investment you have in them. You hired way too many people and therefore your bottom line just improved. And that's very bullish for quarterly report. As long as it doesn't affect productivity, Laying people off would have been a good thing for your company. It's a bad sign that your company is not expanding and needing more jobs in the long haul. But everyone's going to disagree on the effect of that and how long that's going to be in effect and how long it's going to be a problem. Because not everybody's betting at the same thing for the same reason at the same time. It doesn't make the market crash. Differing opinions is why markets don't crash on bad news all the time. Especially when that news has a delayed or long term effect, like logistically or something that related to jobs market. So you see bad news today, you don't go, I'm gonna short this market, it's collapsing, the layoffs are going up. Imagine this 90% of those people are gonna live tomorrow and still go get sushi with their girlfriend. They still can go to the bar at their friends, they can still get bottle service, they got bottle service, they're not gonna treat their life any differently for a while because we're stupid as humans. We don't think any further than the front of our own shadow most of the time instinctual creatures so i just most people get laid off are going to proceed as normal spend as normal the, the immediate economic effect is practically zero while she will bet on the longer term effect and since they disagree they're going to short at different times different places sell at different places sell some stock not sell another i mean it's not a immediate effect and they everybody knows short term you lay off ineffective labor people didn't make much it's always bullish for the company because you can reinvest in yourself and efficiency with the money that you otherwise would have spent on a salary of someone who woke up and watched netflix four days a week and showed up to a zoom call for the fifth day which is where we are they switch contracts it's time to switch futures contracts i haven't switched uh contracts yet are you talking about here i haven't done anything i got Bye. Very short up. I'm just seeing hedge pressure. It's pretty normal. So, again, monthly map shows still being bullish until the summer. People are still positionally bullish till the summer. So, what it means is I'm bullish till the summer. When I don't get a bull setup, I just sit out. Easy as that. Bear short up. Rejecting hedge pressure. Monthly in the way. Let's get monthly on the chart. It's very far down there, so I'm just kind of removing it to not mess up the auto scale. Nice, easy sell off day. How far does it go? We don't know. Maybe lower DD band. But nice to wake up and automatically know I'm not buying any dips today. I'm going to sit out. 
That's how a real trader operates. Rock Scooter gives me all information right out the door. It's a very small turnout today. Did, did I post the wrong link? I only have 250 plus people. Where's the other 100 of y'all? There's massive electricity outage around the world. Why not sell from RDZ to lower half gap as res? There's there's absolutely no risk to reward in here. This is just like an open flat. I think that's what it is, Barb. I think people saw it's a bear day and probably just went back to bed. Which should I should do. Freaking Wolf Financial, gotta love God, tweeted last night about Rocket Scooter. I thought I was I thought I was dreaming because I remember last week posting, like, hey guys, thanks thanks for uh, 4,000 viewers or 4,000 followers. So we just started the company account, got to 4,000, made a little post of 4,000. I thought it was a mistake when I when I when I logged into the Rocket Scooter account. Let's take a look at it, and then I'm like sitting there, like, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool, and I'm. I mean, I was like, I remember we just got 4,000 uh, 4, followers. And I was like, oh, that's great. And I come in and I look and I was like, yeah, we just got 4,000. I'm like, oh, wow, we have 4,600 now. And I wait, wait, no, wait, that's 5,600. Wait, we get 1,700 followers yesterday. So, 1,700 followers in one day. What the hell? Because uh, I thought this was 46. I was like, oh my gosh, how we get six? Because my phone was going like ding, 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 ding. Like it's still going right now. Like you said, the counter is going up in real time. It's like ding, 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 ding. I'm like, oh my gosh, we got 600. And I was like, no, wait, that's 1,600. Jeez Louise. Hidden gem for education. This this got over half a million views. What? That just, I love you, Wolf. Thanks, brother. That was really nice. Rock Scooter helps you find low risk, high reward investment opportunities by share, sharing what the smart money is doing in the markets. Like the end the hedge fund advantage of retail investors. Oh, that was nice. Like this is an amazing list though, by the way. You guys need to follow a lot. A lot of these people are great. Let me tell you, let me tell you who's a fucking hidden gem if you don't know. Follow Neely Taminga. This chick is awesome. She's one of my one of my great friends in the trading industry. This girl knows so much. Like the stuff I talk about, I learned from listening to her piecing all the economic data together and like by understanding how it works. Very, 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 very smart uh, person. Let's see who else is on this list. Selling rips, awesome, on spaces with us. Um, obviously, Stock Talk Weekly, huge fan of that group. Buddies with all of them. Y'all know TS Yarm and Bracco and all the, all, the, all the champs over there. TS Yarm, Patrick's one of my longest friends in the, in the industry, he's a great guy. Obviously, Jordan, Ace the Kid, the spaces every day, thousands of people watch this guy trade. I mean, it's like, this is a ton of, whole, whole Mars blog. Uh, literally, it's all Tesla talk. They know everything about Tesla. I mean, these are all people I, you know, obviously, stock market news. Can't not follow Evan. He's awesome. Uh, I don't know some of these people. I'll have to check them out. But I'm going to tell you, that was like completely mind blowing. So, uh, anybody, anybody like tweeting? Anybody want a job? Let me respond to Twitter. <laughs> I was completely floored. I was very, uh, like I said, that was very nice. Nice to give a shout out. I think that's the most impressions I think I ever got on post related to rocks here. Super cool. Very flattered. People are starting to recognize what it is we're doing, which I love. To make, uh, to make an impact on retail trading, something we're very passionate about. Love on the playing field. Waking up today and knowing that this isn't a dip to buy. So I'm not being tricked by the machines that run the market, the pricing algorithms that are looking at liquidity and trying to set bid and ask prices and all these market makers are on the show. No, nope. I know in general, using our technology inside. Bear short up. I'm gonna run the liquidity map. I'm gonna find exactly what it says. I'm gonna draw on the, I'm gonna draw on the chart exactly what that means. Bear short up. You can see hedge pressures resistance. Do we all see that? Let's get a big fat yes in chat if you like. If you see what the, if you see this, right? Let me know you're cool. We're on a quick education. It means that long support's gonna hit resistance at the blue. Any long support's gonna hit resistance at the blue. So easy to see that. And of course, you know, support at yellow, that's kind of where we're looking for. I'm just gonna mimic what I use when I see. Wherever yellow is, remember monthly hedge risk is like way down off the chart. So let's just not even include it in the analysis. So these aren't gonna happen today. These are 
you know, formality. So, but essentially what you see is they're gonna use resistance and hedge pressure. So let's just clean up the chart and I'm gonna draw that real quick. Okay, and you always draw your resistances, like you draw an arrow and then you bump into the next thing and you stop. That's how you do this. So there's one. It's drawing, it's like using crayons, it's pretty easy. Okay, next step. We got something called resilience today. Resilience is negative. This is the half gap gap fill predictor. So we open relatively flat and when res is negative, half gap is resistance to some spot. And again, there is no, there's nothing in the way. It's all bearish territory here. So it like has infinite downside potential. Like it's, it's hard to guess where it goes. Probably the monthly hedge pressure was way off, off, the, off the path here. Now what we do know from Rocket Seeder course is when you open inside of something called DD band, it's not automated yet. Um, when we get our futures data in, in less than a month, you're gonna have all this automated, but you'll know that you have a DD band in the way. All right, so we're gonna just go ahead and draw that right there. <laughs> Let's circle back to look at this. DD.74, markets are not irrational. The float is gonna be something that's gonna take place. Remember yesterday the float failed. Today the float is very likely to support rational market. Float means on that DD band, it's gonna have a hard time breaking it. We don't have any power like over like you know overly selling market due to hedge breaks markets are clean so when we get this dd band it's going to fight and likely hold and come back up which looks good also you have that monthly hedge pressure support pushing up so this is likely a, a day that's likely to trade down i'm going to tell you a couple more things um dd.74 means that if we are on this side let me just kind of like clean this up and make it smaller Let's talk about what happens in the S&P. So I'm literally drawing up a straight line. Like I could see this the moment the market opens. We know, again, uh, resistance from here to there. We know that when resilience is less than zero, it's, uh, it's to push from here to the box, which is very small. And if you're outside of the box, the box is likely resistance. Um, and then you can stop it at ED band. Doesn't mean it's gonna fall that far. Uh, and then you know you're gonna have float. So it's gonna likely reject really hard is gonna be very high probability and these things are nice and clean okay now the other side of the coin is that this being also bullish presenting the float means that any I mean reverting trade from the middle is likely to do this and then back to here ignoring hedge pressure for the moment um, we're gonna kiss the bull side and probably come back to bear we open bear close bear it's one of the rules we have here most of the time um, hedge pressure break can send that probability out the water, but um, ignoring hedge pressure here, normally you have a scalp from here to the middle. You likely have a runner from here to there, and then it likely returns to where it started. Now let's look at hedge pressure. The probability of a hedge pressure break hits a random pocket anyways, a liquidity pocket, and then from here, um, it's pretty much day over. So when all the rules put together, a couple options are pretty easy to see. Okay. Any hedge pressure break likely has limitations to the upside. So the long the long area is small and the risk is very large, right? You have high risk to very low return for the day. So you can see that the market is likely to have more risk and return on the long side. Do I want to short it? Well, not really because the overall thing we talk about today, market's still generically bullish and monthly map shows bullishness in the long haul. So in general, this is just going to be a choppy, flat day with likely more downside than upside and not even more chasing to the long side. And I already made that analysis and you didn't, you didn't see me make that analysis because I look at it and in one second I can already see all those lines. I look at this when we open, I go, nope, and I'm done. When you get good at this in a second, you can see all this data. Run the monthly map and say, well, it's still bullish for the long haul, great. And today's likely to trade lower, which is great, which means tomorrow I'll probably get a better long, low entry point and that's it. So it doesn't mean that it closes bull, Louis. That's not not the rule on that. What it so to typically where you open is where you close. Ninety six percent of the time, ninety six point six percent of the time, that's the rule. This is the spy back test. Ninety six point six percent of the time, you open bear, you close bear. If DD disagrees with it, then you tell yourself it's going to make an attempt, but likely fail. Never do I think that it goes here and keeps going. The, the four percent chance is possible on an event. But without an event, breaking from bear side for today, today's a bear day in a bull market. Easy to see that. So breaking from bear side to bull side and staying there, don't ever, I don't ever make the 3% bet. 
without an event to make it happen. There's no event. Calendar's clean today. Does that make sense, Louis? So DD ratio outranks resilience like this. Let me get my pencil. I'm tired of drawing my mouse here. Like that. So it is a more powerful signal than this and this, which means that it's going to have a fight against the market. If this guy, so the lower probability is short. The middle probability is short. The higher probability is up, but then the rule likely brings it back down. So you're going to have this pull down that's going to try to push up. So what it tells you is the market's going to be choppy and likely move down at the end of the day. And if it does make a run, I don't, I don't trust it because overall things are, are still down for the day. So again, if I wanted to short this, a great short opportunity uh, would be from here to somewhere, but there's really nothing that I can see that I want to do. In all honesty, it being still bullish in the long haul, I'm just waiting for a good bull setup. But a break from here is likely short-lived for a small scalp. I don't ever bet on the break and keep going. Okay. Uh, so in general, it's just patience on this one. And another thing to take a look at, obviously, if you want to know how something's going to fall, just look at the VIX. Volatility is not present at all. This VIX um, mark, uh, this market is just not volatile. The VIX is just completely collapsed. There's no volatility, which means and volatility is like, just imagine in layman's terms, how tall those V's are as it moves. Not being volatile means that the market's just going to steadily trade. If this was volatile, then I'd, I'd bet on it having some choppy waves and fall pretty quick. This is just going to steadily and being stable and just hold the fort and likely to push up and come back down and just stay around here. This day is going to travel nowhere. Even VIX is telling me. Uh, with lack of volatility, typically in most markets, it does the bid that slowly pushes higher rather than lower. But right now with NASDAQ um, trying to retrace some of what we saw yesterday, with no volatility, I, I wouldn't be betting that it completely collapses until VIX starts to move. So you can see how there is just no power in this market today. There's, there's not gonna be any any big, big runs, big falls. It's gonna be really tight anyways. So it's just shit trading. And then you know that from the moment the market opens too. You just know that it's not really that decent of a day. So those of you that battle with over trading, the best thing in the world is to wake up and see that this is just a day where I'd be over trading. The S&P's gone absolutely nowhere and I've done absolutely nothing. That's a pro mentality. Right. So today's a day where it's worth just watching in my opinion. I love it, Louie. No position is a position. But you always say, like, if you don't trade, what is, you know, it's a win. It's a win of zero. It's, it's a great win. You won that day. We chose to sit out for a very good reason. And you made zero. We'll say, I didn't make anything. If you say that, it's a loser's mentality. You say, I made zero dollars and I chose to make zero dollars. It's amazing. Apple falling to support is going to likely be some support here. Now again, because I know there's competing signals, I know that I'm not going to short this. And there's also no volatility. I know I'm not going to short this either. All the regular signs of understanding how the market works. I'm protected. My positions, you know. Sorry, I'm crunching on some pizza real quick. Apple, great support here. Breaking hedge pressure, then Apple's obviously going to get doomed. Um, with no volatility, it's hard to imagine the market's going to kill itself for no reason. People tend to stage in and, and long VIX calls if the market's likely to come down or have any risk coming down. So. Oh. Like I said, nothing's bearish, so that's the whole point. It's just not, it's a bull day, or not, sorry, it's not, nothing's bearish in the long haul, nothing's short. When I say bearish, 
Trading down doesn't mean bearish. Bearish to me is, is that the market, people are entering shorts faster, entering longs. The market's still bullish. It's just not very bullish today. In general, it's gonna, there's gonna be attempts to go up. So anything up in here is gonna likely uh, diminish. So again, if we have, imagine you have like a hedge pressure break, this is gonna look like this. People are still gonna buy this. It's gonna diminish and it's likely to stay inside of here. Like I said, this is trade potential number two. Big still being indicated. People looking for every excuse to long the market still. Monthly map showed us that. So remember, I don't wake up and say, ooh, it's a down day, let me short. It's like, I don't know how far it can go. And I know it's likely to float off of there. So I'd love to get this dip to get the best bang for my buck. Uh, not chasing small ups. Instead, I'm gonna save my money and try to get a big down. Res is positive. Yes, right. But resilience again is not going to pivot the market. Anything relative to anything else other than the redistribution zone, right? So you get to zoom in on this one. All resilience is telling you is that it's likely to push the top side of the box, and then if it's if it's bullish enough, it's it's going to support on the box here. Resilience doesn't tell me how far something goes. It just tells me it's likely to support off the box if this is if this is positive, which it is. So like now, reading it now, in between these two, it's telling me that the market is stuck inside of here as long as res grand zero. And all it's telling me. And you see that bounce from here to there, and it's still doing that. Easy read. So again, it's not break it's not breakout day today. All the pieces aren't lining up. This is not very strong today. The market has taken the stance that it's okay with it not moving. And people are relaxing and waiting this one out. It's gonna have to fight all day to do something. So see how that break, the Hatcher should break, just very short lived. It's gonna have a hard time moving higher today, unfortunately. Questions? I know, right? It's pretty cool to wake up and see that, you know, I'm not chasing the short, not chasing the long. I completely am forecasting how this market's moving today. Uh, you have a trader. It's not to, you don't have to like overdo it. You don't have to be, you know, like I said, the fundies <laughs> out there in love to overdo it. Build such a strong bear thesis. But how markets move is the art of a trader. You're almost like waving your hands like a conductor and the symphony's playing for you. Like it's everything that I'm saying is happened, that I said it was going to happen is happening. Maybe not in the right order, maybe not at the same time I want it to, but everything is likely to happen. We're trading down. There's some force gonna push us back up. If we break out, it's gonna come back down. So I say, well, all right, this is likely the middle. It's likely we're gonna end up by the end of the day. Why would I wanna make any position long or short from the middle anyways? And so like at the end of the day, <laughs> is that, what, what, what is it? Oh, right. Podcast? What, which podcast are you listening to today? I love NPR. Do you see what I'm saying? Like the idea is if you want to scalp days like this, always assume that they likely come back to the middle. It doesn't look like a breakout day. One, one could take the riskier trade that this likely happens. One can take the trade that the float likely happens, right? So what I like to do is get the trades from here, or if you like to trade options, example, and I'll put some more tickers up here if you want me to run some. A lot of people will be on the long side of calls. Sorry, the short side of calls, the short side of puts. Like one, one, one may, um, one may trade that style of trade. You, you can have a debit spread on either side, right? To bet that it doesn't break out there and to bet it doesn't break DD band here. And this is a day when you wake up like this. I'm sure Ashton wakes up and goes, This is a this is like this is a trading day for Ashton's group to be very heavily involved. When you see days like this and you know it's not breaking that and it's not breaking that, you you can trade that. Like I'm like three thousand percent sure that we are likely inside of a sandwich, right? Speaking of sandwich, I have a sandwich for breakfast. Avocado on this thing. Ooh. Fried egg. Ooh, somebody likes me. This is bread. Mm. I'm smacking your face. The idea that you know it's not going anywhere, there are trades you can take. Non-directional trades where you capitalize on um, 
making theta and making some premium on a credit or a debit. Well, this, I, I actually would establish more of a credit spread here than the uh, debit spread side. I could buy more puts to turn this into a credit. Do you understand that? When you get really good at trading, every day has a way to trade it. So just directional, just because the sample is not that directional. You can trade it's not directional if you believe that. Some are masterful traders who understand how the market's likely to move. Had I sold calls and puts, I've been making money every moment. This market hasn't broken those levels. Data. So thinking about how to trade something that's easily seen to be flat uh, is masterful as well, which is what I want to do with my next trading challenge is actually trade options, show how to do that. I'd be legging in to a condor or something. Yeah, Jace nailed it, dude. Like, Jace is, Jace is a, a madman at this stuff. He gets it. Like, <clears throat> selling selling options is great. <coughs> VIX is low, so you're not going to get, like, you know, the IV part of the premium built in, but you're actually going to not really deal with a lot of volatility in the market to strike those options and money. It's two ways. I know, people, like, a lot of people like to be on the sell side of options when IV is baked in. But lack of volatility, you're, you know, doesn't mean your premium gets artificially inflated, just repeating what I said. Lack of volatility means the market's likely not to get very wild, and that containment is even stronger. And uh, Jay said, VIX being so low doesn't help for good premium, as he nailed it. You'd have to sell more options, which is why if I was establishing, like, that debit spread, I would, I would actually, um, you have to sell a lot. Its premiums will be lower, especially the further out of the money you go. But if it's liquid enough, you might be able to get into something pretty easily. This guy is only talk. Oh, uh, uh, uh. this guy is only talk. This guy, this guy is up five hundred percent for the year, brother. Um, I didn't mean to assume your gender, I guess, brother or sister. El Master de la Numerología. Did you just join a talk show? Let's say the guy talkings talk. You are. Le Master de la Obvious. You don't really, you don't really make 500% by trading every day. So you just gotta talk sometimes. Uh, it is, it is, a, it is a talk show. I, I, I wasn't sure. Should I be dancing? We can make a dance show if you want. I'm, a, I'm gonna lie though. I, I'd hate to lose followers and viewers. If I start dancing, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm so clumsy. I don't know. Maybe I'll get, maybe I'll get followers. For how clumsy I am. Ariel, you, 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 you shush. You, you you shush don't don't encourage me that's bad i'm very easily influenced by peer pressure don't you don't you do it i i am the person that 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 like all right fuck it let's go hold my beer that's me i am that guy i will i will do it but dancing nicole will tell you i dance way too much it never it's never good looking oh yeah I'm gonna start doing the camera again at some point in the mornings. I've just been so l lazy to get ready. Like I'm up every night till two or three in the morning with the dev team. I mean, people forget that I'm developing this trading platform as well. So <laughs> now I get up, trade, teach, and then I do make my media rounds and stuff. But most of the day I'm spent developing. That's like a, it's like a whole 10 to 12 hours I put in after this. So basically I go, I'm up so late. I wake up half time. I'll be wearing pants most of the time. I'm not even gonna lie. I crawl into my desk chair wearing whatever I slept in for the last three days. That's usually my life. But I gotta be on a like yesterday. I was on a, a morning show. I had to get up. I've got like a stack of dress shirts on the floor. They probably got cat hair on them, but you can't see it from the camera. I get up, dress up, fix my hair a little bit. But because I don't normally wake up like I normally do and try to look pretty for y'all. I 
I don't have the camera on for mornings anymore. <laughs> Ariel gets up at 5 a.m. You go get her. What wait? What makes it rap battle, dude? We should do rock skater rap battles and have a contest where if you win the rap battle, we send you a t-shirt with the squallet on it. I don't know. We need to get the squallet t-shirts going again. That was a fan favorite back in the day. You leave the platform and comes back after more than a few minutes. It must restart. It's a way to fix it. Uh, you might have a bad connection. It's hard to say. Try to always tell people a lot of times you're disconnecting from the server or something. Uh, if you have internet issues, either A, try a different browser, B, log out, log back in, C, clear all your cookies, uh, see if that helps, or, you know, open up the settings and then load all your defaults. Just get a fresh start. Usually that can clear any issues. And the program since mid-April, still one million shy of being a millionaire, <laughs> but for richer knowledge, Rockstar is excellent. Hey man, let me tell you, goal as a trader is to find what you're good at in trading. You know, it's not just to be good at day trading. It's to find like the optimal ways to trade each market. Like I said, every day is a way to trade. We would say like with all the variety, why would you trade options? Why would you trade stocks? Why would you trade futures? Right? Nice, beautiful momentum day, markets moving up or down, futures going heavy, pay less taxes on the gains, get in, get out. You're good. Nice flat. Why would you day trade options? Well, nice flat day. That's a great opportunity to trade non-directional. So options have all the different flexibilities of, you can bet on a market being choppy and wide and choppy and narrow, a market being flat and going nowhere, a market not breaking some level or not breaking another level. You get all these additional bets you can make of something not happening with options. You pay more taxes on the, on the short-term gain, but you get more flexibility in how you can trade it. So your goal of mastering trading is understanding the variety of how you can trade. So have an options account, I do. Have a futures account, I do. Have a stock account, I do. Why trade stocks? I don't ever day trade stocks or swing trade stocks. I always invest spare cash in stock market when applicable for the long haul and just let it hang and you know hedge that if necessary. But beats inflation. You know, small gains per day, just investment account grows over time. But I think everybody tries to incorrectly trade each style of trading. You know, swing tra day trading options is really difficult to do in the long haul. That's why I love Ashton's approach. You know, it's very selective. You know, trade when things set up a certain way and not overtrading. That's why I partnered them. We do exactly the same thing. We analyze the market differently. We don't overtrade. We see what is and trade what is. We don't let bias or what we want to happen happen. Like I know SPY. You know, I bought the dip yesterday, took a loss, and it's falling. I'm not ready to revenge trade it. Okay, I'm going to get the long. I was right yesterday. I'm going to get the dip today. I wake up today, clear as day. I can see this This is going nowhere. So then if I were saying, ah, okay, well, let me make a trade. Let me bet that it stays contained. Let me do the iron condor route. As you guys explore and get better at trading, especially Colin, you know, um, reading markets and experiencing how markets flow under different conditions is what you are gaining every day with wisdom. You know, you're not trying to push the button every single time. And I always say my favorite saying is like, don't, you know, if a hungry wolf chases every rabbit in the forest that runs by him, lagged behind the rabbit, the rabbit moves and the wolf is exhausting himself, uh, then he'll be too tired to even walk up to the wounded pig because his friends will beat him to the punch. So a hungry wolf chasing rabbits will always starve and miss a feast. So there's a strategy to preserving your capital when markets are flat. If you want to take a smaller trade, there's ways to trade the flat market, gain some premium, and sell some options. Well, those rabbits going to have rabies. That's right. <laughs> So learning from like me and learning from Ashton and learning how different people trade different markets is great. Anybody right now who's who's trying to long or short today directionally is going to sit there and just be frustrated all day. They're going to gain an extra gray hair in their beard. They're going to be frustrated. Their position is going to be slightly green, slightly red, slightly green, slightly red. And then you got eight hours of your life gone. When what I did was decide I'm spend one hour of my life talking to you knuckleheads from the other seven hours probably cleaning the house and sweeping the garage. There's a lot of dirt in there. I don't know what happened. It gets windy and it blows dirt in the garage. See what I mean? 
The best part of trading is knowing when to take the day off. You can wake up and say it's a day off day. Cool. Finally get to that. Building that birdhouse I've been trying to build or whatever. Whatever you want to do. So I'll tell you when it comes down to the to the wire. What makes me better than most people in trading is my ability to see that the market's going nowhere on multiple days or that it's going to be random right out the door. I can see that and I avoid it like the plague. The best part about it is we're in a recession. You must trade very carefully anyways. Getting in and getting out as much as possible is likely. The market can flip direction in an instant and continue its path down once somebody's had enough of the long and ready to take profit. Whatever day they pull the trigger, you, you gotta be prepared for. So get in, get out, avoid as much as possible. And really, less is more. Less is always more. Every day is a new day. See how today I haven't mentioned once. I had a huge sell off yesterday. It's probably going to continue. Lower. Don't care. Yesterday's over with. I wake up today and see what it is. The best part of rocket scooters are not having hysteresis, which is a product of, um, is of growing skewer bias and results from historical um, uh, accumulation of an outside influence. An example we always see in chemistry was like, you do a little reaction on a beaker, right? There's, that's a beaker. And you mix two things together, make some whatever, you dump it out, you clean it out, but then there's like, you know, you didn't clean it that good, so there's like a couple of spots of whatever residues left in there. And then you use the beaker again to do the experiment, and you don't clean it out. You get more stuff. And then even your side products start making other side products. Right, so over time you have additional influences to your reaction that's gonna skew your results in a weird way because it's carrying over a non-pure state. Initial condition is not empty. Initial condition is you mix A, B, and a little bit of C is stuck to the side of the beaker. And that hysteresis is, is a generic skewing of your results, right? because of an outside unwanted influence. It's like leftover from the previous, if not the application here is like, market sold off, I'm not gonna contain yesterday's emotions and have emotional hysteresis today. I had told that, I, I was on a psychology talk with a bunch of cool, it was like Leah and Sean, a bunch of people, it was market psychology, and if y'all know Sean, he's great. He's like, I love that word hysteresis, and he's like, what, is it, what does it mean? I was like, oh, well, how, I only know what it really means, I just know how we use it in chemistry. He's like, oh, that's great. He's like, that's like emotional history. So it's like you carry over your negativity from like yesterday or yesterday it felt bad. So today I'm, I'm cautious or yesterday I took a loss. So today I'm cautious. He's like, that's like emotional history. So, and I was like, whoa, that's brilliant. I'm going to say that from now on. Sean kind of came up with that, that, that little verbiage. There. I was like, that's great. I mean, should I be scared of the market today? Because yesterday fell. No, today has its own mechanic. Who cares about yesterday? My indicators aren't looking at yesterday. I don't give a shit about what happened yesterday. Right. That's it. Let's look at some other things. QQQ today. Um, markets don't rally. What do you say? How come DD and Res are positive? And markets still not rally. It's it's gen it's generally moving up because of those things you said. The market is certainly moving up, just like you said. Yeah, like recency bias, king of quest of quest. Yeah, that's some that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I like that. I like the way that sounds. It is trading up because of what you said. It's just trading up slowly because these aren't they're not signals aren't that strong. Did ED being 0.75 was that first thing I said? We're likely to kiss the bull zone. But you know that if you open bearish, it's likely to close bearish as well, more often than not. Exactly how that works. So you can see that all your indices are, are trickling up a little bit. Just a little bit. Russell, not so much. But Russell is a different mechanic, right? Um, it's fine. They're, they're moving up-ish, as you said as the bullish indication shows and the DD positive shows, like I said earlier today. This is likely to do that and come back down to there. 
this is likely to float and come back to there. So there is no volatility, like VIX is just chilling. So this is likely to just trickle in one direction. It's gonna just move slow and just kind of jerk around. You can see a push and pull uh, signals. Because you open bear, it should be very rare to be in that bull zone and rallying. It's rare, and if it happens, it happens. It's really hard to say. Or it gets irrational and possible hedge breaks, which can cause additional movement. NASDAQ's about to hit its upper DD band right now, as a matter of fact, so keep that in mind. But yeah, market is moving up. You say, why isn't it rallying? Like, why aren't we rallying really hard to the upside? Well, there's a lot of pressure mechanics. I mean, you have this a lot of bear pressure right here creating selling pressure against this edge. It had to fight to break through hedge pressure, as you see right here with all this volume that came through. Now it's random in the middle. Mean versions tend to break to the upside. Uh, anything in here is likely to, to hold and maybe by the end of the day, like I said, come back down. Yes, yes. All right, a couple more things. I just some Microsoft earlier. Microsoft is flat, not really doing much. BSU. I only trade off of something to something else as long as the RNR looks good. BSU, uh, just gener generically pushing towards hedge pressure is what it's going to likely try to do. But when NASDAQ hits its upper DD band, everything's likely to pull back a little bit. Um, like I said, here's your first resistance today. Uh, red line captured, DD band being touched. This is likely your sell off point for NASDAQ if it does sell. Again, with no volatility. Wait, let's actually only. Not a lot of volatility today. Dips are going to get bought up, and it's going to be a slow move. Just a slow move. So it's it's likely not to turn around until VIX shows otherwise. So like I said, that's why I'm not shorting this for big red for big red coming out. So these are these are great containment days. I see dips are getting bought up. You can see that VIX. There's no volatility. There there are. Volatility and liquidity are inverse, right? Liquidity means the number of bulls and bears together in a room that agree on the price. Higher liquidity means the room is stuffed full of more people and the people in the room more, more or less agree more on what the price of the thing is. So there's two factors in liquidity. If there's two people in a room that agree bull or bear is less liquid than two million people in a room that agree bull or bear at the same price. At the same price, the more people is liquidity um at varying <coughs> prices with the same amount of people the closer the price is and the disagreement is more liquid as well two factors right the inverse of liquidity is volatility so volatility is going down liquidity is going up so you say aha volatility going down there are more traders who likely agree on the price let's look at both of those factors so it means that every dip there's a bull and every <laughs> pop there's a bear there's a lot more bulls and a lot more bears, so therefore that market's gonna be nice and tight. So, ooh, there's a green candle, let me chase the long. No! There's a red candle, let me buy the dip and get a better cost piece. It's yes! Like, if you wake up and see green candles when markets aren't volatile and you think you're missing out, you're a terrible trader. <laughs> you should say, aha, there's no volatility, which means where we are now is likely the average. We're trading in the mean, because no volatility is high liquidity. So I had to trust the market that every dip is, if I want to short, I don't see a red candle. Ooh, this is finally short, let me jump in. If you want to short, you short off of a green. If you want to long, you long off of a red because you know the dips are gonna get bought quick. And the peaks are gonna get sold quick because the market's extremely liquid. There's tons of buyers and sellers. You will get a better entry going against the herd on the candle you see for the position you want. Make sense? I don't see this breakout green and go, aha, I should long there. I see a couple reds and I'd rather buy on a red. I'd rather buy on a red. If you want to short this, don't see like three green, three red candles. Ooh, I'm going to chase a short. If the market was volatile, yeah, I'd be chasing the short or chasing the squeeze. There's a little more volatility that shows that it's going to break this little containment. See, if you were trying to short and you'd be, aha, there's a green. Finally, I can short off of it. If you understand in volatility, chasing the direction you want is always gonna be a bad cost basis. You'll sit there upside down. Had I chased this green candle the long, knowing it's not that volatile, I would actually have been upside down for 30 minutes. Like, oh my God, no maneuverability, can't buy the dip. 
knowing that it's not volatile, I can wait and go, aha, there's some red. Let me, let me long here. Okay, good. Okay, it fell. Okay, it fell. Let me long there. If you're trying to short, you're like, oh, wait, let me let it hit something that's green and then short it. Markets are volatile. You can trust it to revert back to where it was because that's what liquidity is. There's buyers and sellers on both sides. You're not going to see the market do that or do that that easily. You're going to see that there's going to be directional uh, buying and selling or, or non-directional buying and selling both sides containment. So bulls should be looking for dips to buy. Bears should be looking for a pop short, usually in almost all markets. If you're chasing candles, you're going to have a bad time as a trader. It's all just kind of a normal thing. All right, I'm going to call it a day. No trades for me today. Nice, clean, just retracement. I don't really care to watch. I'm going to let it do its thing and then come back. Uh, come back tomorrow and, and uh, give it a good analysis. Head over to the Discord. We'll maybe do a lesson a little bit later, but I'm going to call it a day. Got a ton of stuff to do. Things to report. Really cool. Really cool. We are so close uh, to getting our futures stuff uh, ready to go. We're going to have a connectivity to Discord. A connectivity to futures brokers right here. You'll be able to click a button. Thing called connections. Connections will open up and say connect your Discord. Connect your Discord to Rocket Scooter. Pretty soon, you'll be able to talk to your platform through Discord. You'll be able to get hedge pressure DM to you from the platform in your Discord. All kind of fun stuff. But auto assign roles. You upgrade your package, it would auto, it'll give you access to the new things, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And you'll say something connection. We're about to connect. We're gonna they're partnering with a broker. You'll be able to set up your um, brokerage account through over 80 FCMs. And then you'll be able to open up your DOM and trade futures inside a rocket scooter. You get futures data coming in the back. That's all coming down the pipeline. Day to day to day, we're working on that. Boom, boom, boom. Love you guys. We'll see you all tomorrow. Gotta love it. Hey. Silly boy. Don't claw at that. Come here. Kitty cat clawing at my acoustic padding on the wall. That's not a scratching post. It's very expensive padding. Thanks for joining in the morning. When y'all come in, uh, the stream makes me really happy. Love that we can bring Rock Scooter to the masses. Show you guys are institutions of position where market makers are hedging. This is the new wave of information. We're revealing to retail, helping level playing field. The previous analysis types left you in the dust, lagging behind the market. And everybody seemed to have an idea of what's going on except for you now level playing field and bring the institutional knowledge, the hands, the retail trader, the engineer, perfect solutions for everybody. And thank you for sticking around. Make sure you check out the extended trial, 35 bucks a month, pays for your data and basically get everything for free for three months. 35 is the cost. And from there, you can get the entirety of the package on everything we teach and all the techniques we have here. See y'all.